family, let me begin by just saying thank you for allowing me. Uh, it is an honor to minister to you on this difficult day. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. And I know from the family, uh, they would like to say thank you to each and every one of you uh, that is, is here today, that has shared uh, words of comfort, that have shared stories and shared time together. But let's open uh, this morning with a word of prayer. Our Father, Lord, we are uh, thankful for who you are. Uh, we are thankful that uh, we are not alone on difficult days, uh, that you are with us. And Lord, we just pray now that you will come into this place, that you will uh, strengthen souls, lift up hearts. We again just give you thanks for your love and your compassion this day. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs> a young kid, John 11.35, for me, uh, was an answer to a trivia question. It was going to be a question that a Sunday school teacher or a vacation Bible school teacher was going to ask, and you always had to be ready for the answer, because John 11.35 is the shortest verse in the Bible, and that's all that it meant to me as a kid, was I got to hold on to that verse because at some point I'm going to be asked the shortest verse in the Bible, and I wanted to be the one uh, to get it right. And if you're familiar with that verse, uh, that verse simply states uh, that Jesus wept. And as I've gotten older, <coughs> that verse has become so much more than a trivia answer, especially on days such as this. If you're familiar with John chapter 11, uh, Jesus had a friend that was sick. His name was Lazarus, and he was in Bethany, which is near Jerusalem, and Jesus was ministering in northern Israel in Galilee, and he immediately begins to make the trek down to Bethany uh, to see his friend Lazarus. But as you uh, know in scriptures, crowds followed him, and things held him up, and he didn't get to make uh, the, the journey in a quick manner, and Lazarus uh, dies there in Bethany. And it even takes Jesus four days to get to Bethany after his friend Lazarus passed away. And when Jesus reached the tomb of his friend, that is when we come across uh, the shortest verse in Scripture where we are told that Jesus uh, wept there for his friend. I'm thankful for the honesty of Scripture. I'm thankful that God didn't uh, gloss over uh, the difficult and the painful bits of life. I'm thankful that uh, God was honest that even his son had a painful day uh, with the loss of a friend. And I'm thankful that Jesus shows us that it is okay to hurt and it is okay to weep uh, when we go through days such as this. And I often think, uh, what was Jesus thinking about 
while he was weeping there at Lazarus' tomb. What was going through his mind? And I imagine it was all of the memories that he had with his friends, the stories that he could tell, the things uh, that they did together that went great, the difficult times they had together, the inside jokes, just the meals and the conversations shared together. I imagine when Jesus was weeping there at Lazarus' tomb, he was remembering uh, the good times and the conversations and maybe the not-so-good times that he had with Lazarus uh, because memories bubble up at a time like this. And I enjoyed hearing the stories just next door on Alan and the memories that you have uh, with Alan uh, as he was a graduate of Georgia Tech and I heard how uh, smart he was and how intelligent that he was, but I also heard when he was little and he was in swim class, uh, he was in a beginner swim class and he decided to have more fun than to learn how to swim. And he didn't pass that class because he was goofing off more than he was paying attention to the lesson. But then later, wanted to seriously learn how to swim, took an intermediate class, and not the beginners, went up a class, decided, I'm not going to goof off this time, and passed the much harder class. That just shows the intelligence. Heard about his kindness and his patience from a neighbor that says he always had something for us when we were in a time of need. And then I heard about his patience. He tried to teach his mother how to use a computer. And if anybody has ever tried to teach their mother how to use a computer, uh, that is love and kindness and patience. I heard about his uh, cooking ability. And I imagine that he fed many of you and had many stories shared around those tables uh, with those good meals. Uh, and just again, story after story. And then, uh, man, there's times where I wish I'd have got to Tacoma fast enough to see when Coates and Clark and everything was, was booming as this place had two skating rinks. I can't imagine. I grew up in a small town. I couldn't imagine growing up in a town with two uh, skating rinks. But I heard that, uh, that Alan and Cousin Tammy were trick Skaters. I don't even imagine what you do as a trick skater. The trick for me is not to get hurt going around one time. But we all have those memories and those stories. And that's one of the reasons we hurt today. And even the first story I heard in my church, this is the first story I heard in my church uh, after uh, Alan passed was just a, a while ago, uh, we all decided to go to a play. Uh, we all went to a play in Hartwell, Georgia, with uh, Miss Marilyn. And Miss Marilyn told Alan that he was that she was going to the play. And she wasn't going to be at home for their nightly eight o'clock phone call. But Alan had forgotten, and so he called at eight, and I'm sure he called again at eight fifteen, and eight thirty, and nine. And as he got worried, and as everybody at church blamed Brother Ray for y'all being so late. <laughs> But when she come in at 11 o'clock, the phone was ringing, and I made, I, I, I'd be interested to know how many phone calls was made in the, that three hours. But when he finally got to talk to his mother, he said, Mom, just to let you know, the police will be at your house soon <laughs> because I called for a welfare check. And man, that's love. I don't think anybody would consider me missing after three hours. <laughs> We all have those memories, and that's why we hurt, and that's why I'm thankful for John 11:35 that tells us when Jesus went through this time, he hurt too. Uh, we have a big misconception as, as Christians and believers and folks in the church that uh, being strong, you know, if you're being strong, it's the absence of tears, and that is absolutely not what the Word of God teaches. Because when Jesus wept, John eleven thirty six is a wonderful follow-up verse. As the Jews saw Jesus weeping over the loss of his friend, they didn't say, oh man, see how weak Jesus was. Oh, he's not who we thought he was. Look at him crying over his, he should be stronger and tougher than that. Nope. In John eleven thirty six, the Jews said, see how Jesus loved his friend. Tears and hurting and pain is not weakness. It's absolutely love. It's the love that you had for Alan and the love that Alan had for you. And so know that when we hurt this day, 
we're being Christ-like. We're being just as Jesus was because he hurt when his friend hurt. So my encouragement, family, and friends and loved ones this morning is uh, from Matthew chapter 11 because Jesus told us what to do when we hurt, uh, when we're burdened, when we struggle. And without doubt, we are struggling and hurting and full of burdens this day. And Jesus tells us exactly what to do when we are in this state, Matthew chapter 11. As he told the crowd, come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Uh, there is nothing that I can do for any of you. I wish I had magic words that could do anything, but I don't. But what I have is a wonderful and amazing Savior who is immensely greater than I will ever be. And he tells each and every one of us, each and every one of you, come to me and I will help you carry your burdens. And I will help you when you hurt. And I will give you peace and rest and comfort and strength. So my encouragement to each and every one of us is come to Jesus today. Uh, we often look for so many ways to, to help ourselves when we hurt, to, uh, to cover the pain or to mask the pain or to ignore uh, the pain and the hurt. But there's only one way to have our pain and our struggles lifted off of our hearts and our souls and to help us through times like that, and that is coming to Jesus Christ. And so I hope today that you will come to him and that you will find your peace and your strength and all that you need in him. Let's pray again. Father, Lord, we are, again, just so thankful for the honesty of your word. And we're so thankful for Christ's example. I'm so thankful that he didn't just come to this earth to die on the cross for our sins, but he came to this earth to show us how to live. And he showed us how to grieve with the loss of his friend Lazarus as he wept, as he hurt, and as uh, he was just missing uh, his friend. And Lord, I just uh, lift up again this family and the loved ones to you, uh, to you this, this, at this time. And Lord, I just pray that you will strengthen, uh, that you will bless, that you will encourage them. And Lord, I pray most of all that each and every person here will come to you and they will find their rest in you they will find their refuge in you, and they will find their strength in you. Uh, Lord, just again, pour out your blessings, your mercy, your love, and your compassion upon the family and the loved ones this day. And we give you thanks and praise in Christ's name. with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord 
as long as I live. And I want to focus on two simple words uh, in this uh, chapter uh, to, to uh, help you to grasp what David is telling us in this chapter. You have to know a little bit about shepherding. As he says, when you walk through the dark valley, uh, thy rod and thy staff, uh, they comfort me. The rod and staff are two uh, tools used in shepherding, but they're used for two different reasons. Uh, the rod keeps the sheep going on the right path. Uh, that is what the rod is used for to make sure that the sheep are going where they need to go to reach the still waters and to reach the green pastures and as David is speaking to reach uh, the house of the Lord forever and the staff is to get the sheep out of trouble. That would be the most, uh, if you picture a shepherd holding a staff with a crook at the top, that would be the staff uh, that is there to pull the sheep uh, when they've got stuck in a thicket or they've fallen down in a crevice. Uh, so those two tools of the shepherd are used by David to tell us what God does for us when we walk through dark valleys. So when we're in the dark valley, God wants to use his rod to direct you through it, uh, to get you through it. And he also has the staff for when we get into trouble in that dark valley, he can get us out and he can bring us through. And so a wonderful picture of God that is given to us by David. Uh, he wants to lead and guide you in the direction we need to go. And he's there to help us in our times of trouble. Again, with the goal to get us through the dark valley and to lead us to the green pastures and to lead us to the house of the Lord forever. So again, family and loved ones, the encouragement is the same. In this dark valley, in this difficult time, find your direction in Jesus Christ and find your help in Jesus Christ. Allow him to be your rod and your staff. Let's pray. Our Father, Lord, again, uh, we are thankful that you are there when we are in the dark valley. Lord, this is a dark valley. We lose, again, a son, uh, a father, a friend, a cousin, a loved one. Lord, this is a dark valley. And I'm thankful that we do not walk it alone. As David tells us, you are with us and you have your rod there to direct us in the way we need to go uh, to find those green pastures. And you have your staff there to help us get out of trouble uh, when we stumble into it. Lord, I just pray that each person here will rely on your rod, your staff, your direction, so that you can lead this family through and that you can strengthen and bless this family. And again, Lord, we are thankful uh, for who you are. And I'm thankful uh, that when we hurt, we are never alone, that you are always with us. Help us to lean upon you always. And we pray these things in Jesus' holy and precious name.